<laughs> Mouth. We are at Make em Laugh Films and the Sean Ward Show, and this is how to combine cosplay and comics. We're also going to be talking about how to incorporate comedy as well as YouTube, because we are YouTube comedians and cosplayers. So I'm going to let uh, our teens introduce ourselves. Down on this end, introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name's Rogue. And I'm Sean from the Sean Ward Show. Jason from Make em Laugh Films and frequent collaborator on the Sean Ward Show. Matt, I'm also with Make em Laugh Films. And I, I heckle the Sean Ward Show. Now they show you play nuts. No, but, in, but in all seriousness, uh, we have uh, this divide between us, but really we're united. Because yeah. we do, uh, we've do. we been collaborating on videos and traveling to go back and forth to collaborate with each other for probably about five or more years at this point. Uh, how uh, it, the collaboration started was that I had back in 2012, the first kind of success I had on YouTube was I made a Batman video that was like, you know, just a guy in a Batman costume being silly with people in the street. It was going to be, you remember the SH word? So and so says, and that was the trend. So we were doing mm, Batman says. Changed the title at the last minute to call it Batman's Night Out. Uh, he saw it where he lived down near Chicago at the time. Made a Joker response version of it, and that's how we got talking online. I went to the Chicago Comic Con a few months later. And that's when we met face to face. I hung around a couple extra days in town to make some videos. They did very well. Then he came up to Toronto and made some more videos. They did even better. Actually, what's really interesting and why I like that Rogue is here for this panel is that these two are the people who have been with my channel. We've got a really strong, solid core at the middle of it, and these two have been with it since the very beginning. And uh, if the three of us pose in a picture, that would be a picture of like the dream team from the very start. Um, yeah, long story short is that uh, we've been making videos together for a long time since then. We're up in Toronto doing our thing. He's down now in Florida doing his thing. Whenever we get together, it's uh, a lot of uh, hilarity and millions of YouTube views. And uh, you can give them a little intro about uh, you know how you got into filmmaking on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. So I started making my films back when I was in college, it was sophomore year. And I was right around the, the time that The Dark Knight came out. So I knew that I really wanted to get into video making. So I joined a film club, we wrote a script, and actually I was cosplaying then before I even knew what cosplay was by playing Keith Ledger's Joker in that parody. And then Fast forward to a couple of years later of doing filming with my team down at the University of Illinois. I found out what Comic Cons were. I went to Wizard World in Chicago Comic Con, and that's actually the convention that I met Sean uh, for the first time. So we linked up, we filmed a video called Bane's Apology. We filmed <laughs> that uh, at Navy Pier in Chicago. Uh, had some good times pranking people <laughs> that way. Um, but from there, that's where I was really immersed into the cosplay world and just having a uh, big honor to be a part of um, Sean's uh, team's videos, um, working together with them frequently. And then I moved down to Florida several years after that point, but now I'm here almost four years now. Um, and I was blessed to meet like-minded individuals here, like Matt, where we formed a cosplay community, but also a strong team that operates like a family. And, uh, like all good families, we uh, like to give each other a hard time. Uh, so yeah, he's very patient with all my point of jokes and times. <laughs> point of tears. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of filming. We actually cultivated a cosplay community based at a local comic book shop. And we've been very fortunate to have a good growth rate. And we now do conventions like Megacon where you find people who are, who are blessed to um, give these panels now. So that's yeah, all been building up. And that's all due to our love for cosplay. Um, YouTube again doing comedy. Yeah, so Rogue over here is um, a cosplayer before she's a filmmaker. Like, I'm a filmmaker before I'm a cosplayer. I got into it because um, we did the Batman thing on the channel, like I said. Since I was a kid, the way that they market superhero movies, even before the new ones, like even back like the old Batman ones and whatnot, the way that they would market uh, superhero movies made me as a little kid get the idea that uh, superhero movies are the main thing that anybody cares about in life and that everything else you're doing in, in, in your life is just like killing time until the next superhero movie comes out. That's how I've looked at it ever since I was a little kid. So my dream was always like, I mean, yeah, I wanted to be a filmmaker, I wanted to, you know, one day make movies and stuff like that, but in terms of like immediate ground level, like what I've always wanted to actually do, like wake up in the morning, what do I want to do today? It's always been like, you know, when I was a little guy, it was like, oh, I wish I had a camcorder, so I got this funny idea for a Batman movie I want to make, and then when, when we're teenagers making our little movies on March break and whatnot, it's always, you know, a lot of times be superhero themed. And then now to grow up, um, I, YouTube channel, the Batman thing was the, was the thing that worked out of the gate, but we tried a whole bunch of different things, and the superhero thing for us was just uh, what like people were drawn to and what people watched. 
which made sense because that's my life, that's my sphere of interest, that's my priorities. So the fact that we've been able to get these, this group of cosplayers together and uh, everybody's kind of like-minded in that sense, it's really fun and kind of living a dream to be able to have, like, have these YouTube channels that have been turned into a business and turned into a career. I want to flip it over to Ro for a quick second here because she can shed some light on the experience of like, as I said, she's a cosplayer before she's you know a filmmaker. She can send, spend some shed some light on that experience of like, you know, you're a model and you're posing for cameras and how to transit the, the, the struggles or the, the challenges of transitioning that into actually performing the characters as opposed to just look like the characters. So yeah, um, I've been a cosplayer for more than a minute, but to, if I'm being completely honest, I actually started with a theater background. So I studied theater my whole life, uh, particularly Shakespeare was always my biggest uh, forte, I guess you could say, and my specialization. I also did a lot of stage combat, because that goes generally hand in hand, lots of sword work in Shakespeare. And so when I realized that I didn't have to wait to be cast in a theater show or in an actual movie for my acting career, but I could just be whatever character I wanted with cosplay, it became a whole new world of opportunity. Um, and I know for some people, depending on what you're looking for in cosplay, you might be more geared towards the costume making part, which I enjoy doing, but it's not necessarily my favorite part of the aspect, or favorite part, favorite aspect of cosplay. I prefer putting on the costume and actually getting a chance to be the character. So for example, Sugars, when it comes to being a rogue pool, which is canon based on the video game, you get an opportunity to do little things like the accent as you run around, or when people recognize me in an actual rogue suit, and they're like, oh my god, it's rogue, and I'm like, hey, Sugar, just the way that they light up in a whole other aspect, it's more than just wearing the costume, but actually getting a chance to embody the character they love. And then I was fortunate enough, actually, the first video I was ever in with both Jason and Sean, I was rogue. Um, we had a heroes versus villains hockey team, or heroes versus villains hockey game, because there was the NHL lockout at that time. It was January of 2013, <laughs> and so we filmed it right out front of the ACC, right in the street. We had, you know, the news stations coming around. The police came around, fortunately, just to watch, not to shoot us away, which was very nice. Um, and in that game, actually, we didn't script it so much as we just scrimmaged between the five villains that we had and the five heroes that we had. Jason was there as Bane. Uh, we had our referee here as Commissioner. Gordon. And it was a really fun game, and I actually managed to score the winning goal in my field as Rogue. So that felt very yeah. satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, some of, some of that video was staged like, oh, we got a good gag that we can have, like, you know, this little hockey thing, and we're going to work the superpowers into it. But at the core, we actually did play a real game, and she actually did score the legit winning goal in that game. Um, yeah, it, it cannot be stressed enough, like, how much that's a whole kind of Batman, Nolan Batman trilogy. Like the Marvel movies are just like kicking ASS right now, like at a level like that's just as a fan, like like nothing we've ever seen and kind of what I've always been wanting to see my whole life. But it's sort of like that was teed up for them by Nolan's Batman movies in terms of like getting the public's appetite satiated, you know, hunger, getting people hungry for that kind of content. So when that in, in that kind of uh, lead up to the last six to eight months before that third movie, The Dark Knight Rises, came out, oh my jeez, did we like capitalize on that? Because it's like we make these videos. They would have Batman and Bane and stuff like this. And they'd be getting on the news. Like when we did that Batman's Night Out video, people like the, the news, like Tokyo 6 o'clock news was calling asking if they could report on it. And then the hockey game was nuts. He comes and he dresses up as it used to be Bane. He doesn't do Bane so much. Now he's more Jameson characters like that. But he gets his face on like the newspaper in Toronto every time he comes up to the Fan <laughs> Expo, which is like kind of Megacon, but up in Toronto. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, before we go off uh, on too much of a tangent telling our own stories, I just wanted to put it out to the audience that, like, you know, a lot of people are really curious about YouTube and cosplay and this kind of thing. And I just say, if anybody's got any questions that they've already got already, we just want to start, you know, we putting that opportunity out there to ask them right away. So anything you want to know about YouTube or cosplay, throw a hand up and uh, we'll, uh, or we can just keep telling you our funny stories. All right. We got a hand up right in the front row. Right in the front row. Boom. Do you have a question about YouTube? Um, we're on the YouTube channel. Well, I think I saw Harley's hand in the back. If you want to? Well, you'll get a chance to think about your question. How about Harley in the back there? You've either got to shout or come up to the microphone. It's, it's behind the camera, though, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> well, that's a very, very big question, but to try to make it as simple as possible, 
like on the very most basic level, the arithmetic is just that it's all about ad impressions, right? So they're putting ads in front of your videos and that little skip ad button, right? That, that's, so people are, like any, any media, any advertising medium, people are paying to have those ads there. And YouTube was the company that had that innovation to say, well, hey, why don't we share their ad revenue with the people who are creating the content? Whereas Facebook, they let you, you put all your pictures on there, and there's ads on it, but you don't get any revenue, right? That was a real big innovation on YouTube's part when that happened. When it comes to how to get to that point, that's a huge, that's a panel discussion unto itself because now we're having a conversation about dedication and work ethic and creative vision and like all this different kind of stuff. But to try to boil it down to like a, a, a kind of a nutshell kind of, kind of thing to give to you, it's probably best for me to tell you that the biggest secret, it sounds like at the stage you're at, is really just about like don't think about it too much, just start making stuff and putting it out there. Try a whole bunch of different things, see what works, share it with your friends, try to get involved in a community and just keep making stuff as fast as you can. I, I know that in my experience, like my, my career has taken me from um, quitting a job that I didn't want to be at so that I could make my own comics and sell them to strangers on the street, have to photocopy them at Staples, to uh, getting discovered from my art from that and getting a job on a t late night TV show that lasted for the last, like I was there around for the last two seasons. And then YouTube had gotten big, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna do a blog project, and then now to doing this, uh, the superhero YouTube thing. And like at each stage of that development, the kind of the guiding principle for me was always that um, I kind of had an, an innate understanding of the value of time. Like if you're thinking about it in terms of financial investments, right, compound interest, that same thing applies in your life. And it actually works for you to think of how you invest your time, the way people think of how they invest their money. And think about it in terms of what's gonna pay me later down the road, right? So it's about a lot of nights spent. Friend, oh, yeah. Friends are going out and having fun, and I'm going, sorry guys, I gotta draw the comics page, or I gotta finish editing the video, or whatever, right? And the sad truth is that most people have a, oh, I can do it later attitude about all that kind of stuff. And that's really, I probably say, the central difference, the most pivotal difference between the people that make it happen and the ones who don't, is that the ones who do had to at some point make it the priority and put other things to the side, whereas a lot of other people who don't go down that road keep putting what they want to do aside because it's, it's always there. They can always do it eventually and there's just so much going on. I've got to go to work. You know, friends are going out. Don't want to miss that. You know, it's some so -so's birthday, so -so's wedding, right? So it's like a lot of hard sacrifices and whatnot. But like I said, that's a very, 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 very big topic and I'd just like to see it. Just, like, just start, like, put your phone out, talk to it, and speak your mind. Also, uh, one thing that's really important, I think, when it comes to YouTube, it's easy to get sucked in on being just on the audience side. It's important to know if you're going to go into YouTube, what role you want to play. So, for example, what they do is incredible. The amount of time you're looking at video editing, sound editing, everything else in between, like that's a lot of time and work. It's getting to know different computer programs, whereas if you just want to perform, then maybe one of your better bets is to find a channel that you really like and get in with them and get in on a performative side. Or if you're looking to write your own content, like just know what it is you actually want to be doing because to just have your own YouTube channel means you have to pretty much do it all and that's a lot of time. And uh, make sure that's something that you're truly passionate about. Focus on topics that speak to your heart. Uh, me, for instance, I have a full-time job as a health administrator, so I work 40 hours a week. And then on top of that, I do the YouTube and cosplay stuff. So it's really two full-time jobs. But I gladly do it because I love making fun of the superhero genre and I love cosplay. And even with the cosplay stuff, too, the prep for conventions such as this and just playing the cosplay-centric videos, cosplay meetups for our videos, it takes a lot of time, but it's what I'm passionate about. I, day, I daydream about that stuff during my day job, honestly. Uh, I'm gonna actually uh, tee it over to Matt, too, because he has a unique experience uh, coming from an actor and an entertainer perspective, and now doing his uh, look-alike type of stuff. We could shed some more light based on his experiences. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, for the last 12 years, I, I got uh, licensed or certified back as a stuntman some time back, and I found work, <coughs> excuse me, been shouting all day, we had a woe match. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's hard finding work as a freelancer though, I mean that's more of like a west coast thing, you, there's a lot to that. But also came up with theater, a lot of acting, things like that, and again, Florida's a tough market, so getting involved with like the cosplay stuff, the arenas, I just enjoy it. It's fun doing characters. I started as Spider-Man for six years, I was doing children's entertainment. Um, kind of actually got involved with uh, this guy over here in that arena too. The first time I met Jason, he, he ambushed me. 
doing Jameson. That was Jameson. Uh, yeah. I was literally driving by, pulling into the convention parking lot. I saw Spider-Man who's a dead I'm like, hey, you menace! I've been looking all over for you. Get out of my city. But we started like, working. Who the hell is this? It was great. You know, we started working together <laughs> right out of the gate. So, and um, but getting into this stuff, it's uh, just to keep it brief, but it's it's a hard arena, and there is a lot of information. But in the in the end of it, you just gotta do what you you like to do. And I mean, unless you're like really, really gifted in that situation and circumstance, you, the ability to make a living doing it is gonna be really hard, but that's not discouraging. It's just knowing what you wanna do so that everything else you have to do is just a means to get you there. Yep. So it's just being true to yourself and what you like. You know, I love doing this stuff and it's hard and I still work doing entertainment. I pick up freelance stunt work. It's, but I actually kinda like this stuff more. It's more, I can be more myself. I don't, I'm not as forced to do something that is rigid. So it's just really great. You work with the right people, there's great chemistry. And, um, that's the more important thing too, is then you're not by yourself all the time. You start to be with other people, and that's how you grow. And given, given that um, this is technically a cosplay and comics panel, one thing I wanted to throw out there is that uh, kind of on this topic of doing your own thing and being your own business and whatnot, and what the internet has, not just YouTube, but what the internet has created for people to be able to do with their lives, whole industries, not just job descriptions, the whole industries just invented out of whole cloth, like in the last decade, right? Is it, it, it's, This fascinates me, and I'm so just like, just real stuck on this because it blows my mind, is that if you go look at the sales charts for how much Marvel Comics sells, right? And there, I use them because they're doing the best. DC's doing great too, so look at any of them you like. And since comic book sales are lower now than they were back in the 90s when people were like, oh my god, the industry is dying. There's not even going to be comic books in a few years. The talk behind the scenes, the rumor that I've heard is that Disney is actually considering shutting down Marvel Comics and licensing the characters to IDW and letting them make the comics just to like save the bother. Because so few people read comics, we'll see why, why even bother. And the reason I bring that up is because when you take on these characters, and we obviously love them, and there's such an affection for them that comes across in the work, which I think is a big part of why we can get away with what we do on YouTube. And whether you're a YouTuber or a cosplayer or whatever, yeah, you can take it out of the realm of YouTube. You look at a cosplayer who has like you know tens of thousands of followers, you start thinking about the fact that that person who dresses up as that superhero has more fans than the comic books that that character appears in that are supposed to be the source material. Right? But we look at the, some of the view counts that we get on some of our YouTube videos and to think that more people have a relationship with Spider-Man through our videos than they do from reading the actual Marvel comics. And that's just like, oh my god, what? How did that even happen? Because it's just like, it says so much about like what fan culture has been able to turn into because of the internet and the redefinition of that whole idea of community, right? For centuries, for millennia, community has meant the people in physical proximity to you. Now, you can, you can make community with people literally all over the world and the whole nature of what community is has changed so that now you're looking for like-minded people with similar interests or similar values from all over the world and little pockets of communities form on different message forms or whatever. But the fact that like you can just take your favorite characters and express your creativity through them, the characters represent certain kind of icons that have meaning and beauty to them and it's almost like a language that we as fans kind of speak to each other in, you know what I mean? And the fact that you can jump into that and actually do better than the people who you know, own the rights or whatever, like that's just so mind-boggling to me that like that that's an opportunity that just fan people have now is to like have that kind of impact on other fans and, and, and on the world and whatnot. I think we had a question right up front. Right. Yeah. So how do they make YouTube? How do you what? How do they make YouTube? How do they make YouTube? Yeah. It's actually interesting. It's uh, well, I mean, the, the easiest answer to that question is you take out somebody's phone, you put it in movie mode, you talk into it, and then you upload that video to YouTube. Then it gets into a whole thing about like good lighting and good sound and then all that. A long, that's the talk about technicalities at that point. But this is one thing, especially for somebody your age, my good friend. You, I hope that at some point you'll get to understand what kind of advantage you, you're at. That like, if you, let's suppose that you wanted to be a certain thing when you grew up, right? If you started putting a little bit of work, let's just out off the top of my head, you want to paint pictures. You want to paint beautiful pictures of flowers that look like perfect, almost look like somebody took a good photograph. You know what I mean? If you started working on your talent and, and honing your craft, 
now. You have so many years to work on it and get good before anybody's expecting you to be making any money off of it. Whereas most people, they're just, you know, playing and messing around and going to the movies and doing and having fun, and then it comes time to like, oh, I gotta like look after myself and get a job and make money and pay for things, right? And that's when they start think start thinking about, well, what do I actually want to do to make money? You know what I mean? And so if you can like start developing a talent, I don't know what it is for you, what you want to make YouTube videos about, or whatever that is, if you were to start making videos about it or whatever it is you want to talk about, start talking about it on YouTube like now. Like people would see your cute face here in your Batman shirt and they click on, oh, who's this guy? You know, I bet he's got something interesting to say about this, right? They click on it and they watch you and then they click on it and they watch and then the more you make, the more there is for them to click on after that one, you know what I mean? And that's the snowball effect. The more stuff you make, the more stuff is out there, the better a chance it is that something you made is gonna catch on and you know turn into something big. Yep. And the same concept can apply to the cosplay side of things. I remember back when I first started the channel, we literally used a store-bought Halloween Christian Bale Batman costume. It was the cheapest thing, but it was hilarious. Fast forward to yesterday, I wore a, a replica tactical Justice League Batman suit, and it looks pretty screen accurate. So just uh, working on it throughout the years, and then uh, just upping your circles. If you have you know, people who can make those cosplays, or if you make the cosplays yourselves, um, you know, you get ideas and feedback that how can I take this to the, ne the next level or which characters then resonate with me. I started doing my cosplays or entering the cosplay world as the Joker. Nowadays, I feel I identify a lot more with characters like uh, J. Jonah Jameson, Tony Stark, Bruce Wayne, and then you get the network and then build a cosplay team like, you know, our teams and coordinate different cosplay meetups. Today we have a huge Spider-Verse event that we're doing at 4 o'clock, for instance, and we typically had hundreds of Spider-Man cosplayers congregate for those. So the word keeps getting out. Um, so we started doing those meetups a couple of years back, but now it's the expectation. Everyone asks, okay, when's Spider-Verse? When's the Spider-Verse meetup? When's the party starting? So, just snowballs. Yeah, I think ultimately don't wait till something's perfect to start putting it out there. You have to start putting yourself out there right away and the perfection or what you deem to be perfection, whatever it is, if it's the creation of the costume, the content of the video, the videography side and the technical side, that will all fall into place later. The important part is to be doing it now as you want to do it. Absolutely. Right over here. Uh, two questions. Sure. Uh, individually and as a group, what long-term plans do you guys have in and outside of YouTube? And uh, second question for that guy I am, are you really that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Let's answer the second one first. Despite what some people, more than some people have said, it's an awesome hashtag. <laughs> and it, it has not gotten good traction. But I, I like it. I had a hashtag I made some time ago. I used to just put that guy I am. And it, I, nothing but like, oh, you know, it's just whatever. It was more like, why? My own brother is like, Matt. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, why? <laughs> and it's funny, so I found some better ones. The other question is just why do I keep trying to make my own hashtags? But I think that that's the <laughs> game. Some are being successful, not that guy I am. But it will stay there forever, see? But you remembered it. Well, are you still that guy I am? I am always that guy I am. <laughs> You're that guy you are. Okay. <laughs> right. And then what are your uh, long-term plans both in and out of YouTube to answer uh, the other question? Man, I, social media, like, like Sean pointed out earlier, it's thanks to the new innovations, new technology, new genres, and the way they use everything, but particularly YouTube, social media, those things in the past few years have gone just huge. And they're gonna and continue to accelerate and grow. So it's kind of like, in some ways, it's still a new territory. And for me, like my goal, I just wanna do what I like doing and it's, it's interesting because like I come mentioned before, it's like a, from a uh, like Rogue to a performing background. And the idea behind that is creativity and expression. So the more people that see that, the more people that are like, oh, you know, I like that person maybe. And they'll like, I want to see that person again perhaps. And ultimately, if like that, if I can find a way to stabilize a lifestyle, like, you know, make a living a little bit, that'd be really cool. Because I you know everybody here works. We also do this. It's exhausting. So, I mean, it's never going to be about money, though. It's just, it's about doing what you appreciate. And that's very important to me. It's been a long, exhausting road so far. But I think ultimately, if you do the best you can do, that's, that's 
nothing more can be asked than that of yourself, which I think is cool. So whether it goes like up here or it goes over here, it doesn't really matter so much. If you're doing the best you can, that's my goal. That's, that's what I'm attempting to, is to just keep diving in and enjoying myself, really. All right. Uh, for me, my long-term plans, I'm going to answer this outside of work, outside YouTube first, but my professional uh, career, I'm a health administrator, so my goal is to, of course, become CEO one day of a health center, because how cool would it be for people to work for J. Jonah Jameson directly, or Mr. Batman, Mr. or Tony Stark. Stark. Mr. Stark, can I have a grant? Mr. No. Wayne. <laughs> Mr. Wayne. Um, in terms of YouTube, though, um, honestly, the Sean Ward Show um, continues to be my biggest inspiration. I've seen um, the intense growth rate um, throughout the years. Uh, they broke a million uh, subscribers uh, last fall. Uh, we're currently around, we will break 50,000 subscribers by the end of this weekend. I haven't checked the numbers in a couple of days. But my next goal is 100,000 and then eventually 1 million and just keep making fun of all the Marvel and DC superhero content. But just seeing all the successes that Sean has had, being a part of that success through the journeys and doing conventions together and making new videos, it just continues to be a, you know, the biggest inspiration because you know, I see that you know, it's fully capable for my channel as well to reach those points. So, and also just continuing to upgrade all the cosplays. Uh, my next one's honestly going to be an Infinity War Iron Man suit. And who knows if they have arrived? Actually going to come out of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nanotech, you like that? <laughs> so yeah, those are my goals. Well, for us up, uh, up in Toronto, where we're from, uh, my channel, the Sean Ward Show, is uh, turned into a business. So I, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to actually run it full time. And so the long-term goals for me are very clear. And that's that I want the people who collaborate on the channel, the, the hashtag Team Super Funny, the group that's at the core of it, um, I, I'm working so, so, so hard, very specifically, to be able to make it so that they can quit their jobs and also do it full time. And uh, that would be stellar, because we just got a new studio space and painted the green screen wall just before we left for Megacon. And uh, we're doing big epic uh, parodies, like 10 plus minute parody videos for all the big movies that come out. And those are what's, what's catching on and what's working the best right now, which is what I wanted to be doing on YouTube since before I was even making videos on YouTube. And uh, see, so that's, yeah, the, that's on YouTube, the big, well, it's kind of on and off, because it's like YouTube is the vehicle how we do it, but it's also off YouTube to say that that's what I want to do with what YouTube's been able to do for us. Um, outside of YouTube, I also want to, like, on the one hand, I'd love for, like, somebody like a Marvel to make a bold move and, like, oh, look at this, we've got this YouTube guy to make, to be the director of, like, Ant-Man 3 or, you know, whatever, like, Dare to Dream Spider-Man 3. Um, but that's also like, I, 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 that would be awesome and it would open up a lot of doors for me, but I'm like having so much fun doing what I'm doing without having any kind of like oversight or having to answer to anybody or anything like that, that there's a freedom to that and we're having so much fun with it that, I mean, really just at this point, just, we're just crossing our fingers and hoping that we just can do this forever, you know what I mean? And uh, so what about you, what are your long-term plans? Uh, on and off of YouTube. On and off YouTube, so outside of being an actor and a model, I am a sign language interpreter and so that is something that I will continue to do forever, whether or not I have more work or more money, because it's just something that I really appreciate doing. Um, I also am currently self-publishing my first novel, which comes out on your Independence Day on July 4th, called Willow's Story, and it would be great if that became a full-run series. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And then, as far as YouTube is concerned, I mean, continuing to work with the Sean Ward Show, you know, as he mentioned before, like, it's incredible to think back in 2013 while we were running around outside the ACC just playing a game of hockey to what we come to now and being able to just continuously be a part of that. And in addition to the acting side, I do get to dabble a lot with the writing as well too. And so I have a lot of fun you know, writing some of our more scripted stuff for the Sean Ward Show. So just kind of keeping at it, really. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> we have a question again from Harley. Absolutely. So, um, you, YouTube's new stipulation for monetized videos, you have to have that threshold of number of watch hours um, in a given month, as well as 1,000 subscribers. A lot of uh, channels that were below those thresholds, or actually all of them, uh, had their monetization taken away. Um, and, you know, it is rough, uh, but at the same time, like, if people keep uh, pushing hard, because the first 1,000 subscribers are the hardest to get. Uh, but through perseverance, just to keep on pushing through um, through different uh, venues, 
cross promote on different uh, social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, get all your friends and family to share the content and you can make it past those thresholds. Also, I think it's important not to get fixated on those thresholds because there were a lot of people who were upset when monetization was taken away from them. But to be honest, if you weren't at that threshold, you weren't actually making any money off of YouTube in any way. Also, there are some channels that are past those thresholds and do have the ability to monetize that will turn it off because people are more inclined to watch something that doesn't have ads if they can go through this huge playlist and you'll get more watch, like you'll get more views in a quicker time period because they don't, oh, I have to skip this commercial or just next on the next video on the playlist on the side there. So I wouldn't get caught up so much in that side of it. Just keep putting content out there and once you pass it, that's when you can really start to wonder whether or not it's worth turning monetization on. If, if for the benefit of everybody, just in case what you're just to take it to the very base level, just in case your question was actually what is that? What is watch time or what is watch hours? It's just literally the accumulation of all the time everybody has spent watching your videos. So if 30 people watch for two minutes each, that adds up to an hour, right? And so they want to see that you've got that total number of whatever it is, like 4,000 hours or whatever in a 365 day period to be able to enable ads to be included. If that, at the point, they've just determined that it's in their interest, that it's worth their bother to like put ads in your videos and include you in that, in, in that, in that program. Would that be like one video? No, 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 just across your whole channel. Oh. Yeah, so if you've got 100 vi videos and people watch 30 seconds of each, then that'll count for almost the arithmetic 50, hour, 50 minutes or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's just like accumulated, accumulated total. Yeah, and, and the more videos you have, the more likely it is that you'll have, keep aggregating those numbers of uh, watched hours, which is why it's just very important to have consistent content. So we do our best to release two videos a week because we just want to keep on you know, increasing the algorithm and increasing our reach to a wider audience. Yeah, the name of the game on YouTube is, is watch time. I don't know how many of you know this. The name of the game is, is watch time as opposed to views. Even though it shows you views and subscribers as if that, that means something, it, it doesn't, aside from just kind of give you a general idea of how popular a video is. What YouTube is all about is watch time, how much you have contributed to people staying on YouTube and spending their time on YouTube. So if you have a video that does really, really well at getting people to, even if they're not clicking on your stuff, if people are coming to your stuff and it's making them click on something that's to watch another YouTube video, that counts positively towards you because the YouTube algorithm that determines what's getting suggested to people and what they're putting in front of people when autoplay is turned on and that kind of thing is all de determined by the big, very elaborate secret sauce that they don't tell anybody. But a lot of people have put a lot of work into trying to figure it out. The best we know up to now is that it's all about you driving watch time on YouTube, not even just on your own channel, right? So you do making videos that gets people to click on other videos even if they're not yours, that counts good towards your stuff being suggested because the logic is, oh, this is getting people to stay on YouTube, right? And, uh, and, and so if you have, it used to be that it was all about views and that's how the, how the algorithm worked. So if you had a video with a million views on it and all those views were 30 seconds each, that would count better than a guy over here who's got a video that's an hour long and people tend to watch the whole thing but there's only like 50 views on it, right? Whereas now, it, because it's all about watch time, it, the name of the game is like longer content, longer engagement, which is why you see a lot of channels a couple of years ago when they made that switch, a lot of people changed their formats to be making videos that are longer than 10 minutes long because that 10 minute threshold is when it counts as a long session in YouTube. So it's all about getting people to stay on YouTube for 10 minutes plus. And if you're helping contribute to people, not even like I said, not just for your own videos. If you're contributing to people staying on YouTube for 10 minutes plus, then the algorithm's gonna favor you and that's what's gonna work. And I think that's part of the reason why these 10 plus minute long epic parody movies that we're doing are doing so well is because they're longer. So if people watch 30% of a video that's three, if our, if our you know, percentage goes, stays the same, 30% of a 10 minute video is a lot more than 30% of a three minute video. And so that counts so much more towards watch time and towards driving the algorithm to get them to suggest our stuff to people. And uh, that's worked out very, very well for us. Uh, anybody else got any questions out there about the uh, YouTube game? I see two here. I think I saw that one first. Actually, there's more question to you about, I don't know if this is already asked or what would you decide to be a JPEG game? It's an awesome casual cosplay. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, I um, really love J.K. Simmons' portrayal of the character from the Sam Raimi trilogy, and I just thought he was the funniest thing ever. Um, and then I visited uh, Sean for uh, Fan Expo in Toronto one year, 
I decided, hey, why not just do J. Jonah Jameson, let me just shout at people and stuff, you know, see what happens. And then it actually came very naturally, it's actually the most therapeutic character that I play, because I get to shout and say things to people that I can't do during my daily life or at work and everything. I call them like a, some random Spider-Man, you know, you're a complete knucklehead, what are you doing? Get out of here, you're fired! And, you know, they wouldn't think anything of it, like, I get away with that stuff, because that's <laughs> what the character is. He's abrasive, um, he's just very intense, he's angry, and, you know, feels great. <laughs> also because he gets to pound bottles of Jameson whiskey like it's Coca-Cola and say that he's in character. This is true too. Uh, okay, and then the red mask there. What was your question there, bro? Uh, back to the money thing. Um, are you paid automatically or do you have to request to be paid? Uh, no, well, how it works is that uh, to get paid by, you, by YouTube or by Google at the end of the day, you got to have a, an AdSense account linked to your YouTube channel. And so all of your payment information is there. And how it goes is that they pay out once a month and they pay out after they owe you 100 bucks. So if you're making, if your channel's bringing in 10 bucks a month, you'll have to wait until it adds up to over 100 bucks, and then that'll automatically trigger the payout at the beginning of the next month. And so it's a, a monthly thing with a $100 threshold. Anybody else out there got questions? There's a big hand right there. Um, you came to Facebook, now trying to kind of be, uh, anything that kind of says, oh, let's try it out, we try it, because I know I would love to be more involved with Facebook video and be publishing more to Facebook and, and whatnot if they could sort that whole thing of how are we going to like, you know, how's it going to contribute to the business if we could sort that out. What you described is actually a problem for Facebook because they made a decision way a long time ago that they're going to kind of goose the numbers by saying that it counts as a view after two seconds, whereas on YouTube it counts for as a view after 30 seconds, right? So YouTube cares more about the numbers being accurate to people actually watching something, getting something out of it, whereas Facebook just wants to be able to show off the numbers. So to take that to blue chip advertisers and try to convince them that that's where people are and whatnot, it's one thing to put the numbers out, but as soon as you start trying to find out like about those kinds of things, like what counts as a view and whatnot. It's a little bit more of a challenge. They also don't seem to be um, taking uh, have much of a hurry around introducing them. We understand that they have a plan for introducing a revenue share program with content creators, but they haven't really announced what that is. And it's been years at this point where they're saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So it's not really a big part of kind of my publication strategy beyond promotion at this stage. I would love for it to be in the future. I like Facebook, it's where everybody is, everybody's got a Facebook account, and uh, I mean, I think it's a, they're uniquely positioned out of anybody else to give YouTube a run for their money, but at the same time though, YouTube is like so beyond what you can comprehend big, like YouTube is literally the second biggest search engine on the internet after Google, and that's nothing to do with saying that of video sites, just in terms of a search engine itself, it's like that's how big YouTube is. That YouTube searching on YouTube is the second biggest search engine uh, on the whole internet. Like it's it's so big. Like I, Facebook, like maybe they'll be able to take some market share, but I really don't see them ever being able to become like the dominant platform and, and dethrone YouTube in that respect. So for better and for worse, YouTube's kind of it for the foreseeable future. And even promotionally speaking, to be honest, Instagram and Snapchat have really given Facebook a run for their money as far as getting more people quicker, getting more different content when you're going through your news feed. So it's one of those, I mean, Facebook has the longevity of how long it has been a thing, but it's something that I would definitely take a grain of salt when you're using that one and explore other social media platforms. Yeah, all right. We've got to, who's got the next question over here? Yeah, right, time for a couple more. Well, well, we're waiting for the next question. Okay. Z-Dog. I have a question for y'all. How's the production coming along on that uh, Shield video? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the pre-production still. We're still trying to get our main actor to uh, approve of certain scenes. That we have <laughs> is that your main actor right there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, See, this is the it's problem with these prima donnas, creative people. I'm not here to kill Brad. <laughs> we all like to give each other a very hard time. That's very true. This is true. So, yeah. Is 
So essentially, well, we do a lot of Instagram live streams, um, and that's actually how we come up with some scripts. Some of them see the light of day, some of them like this one probably won't. <laughs> so this one's a little bit more inappropriate, a little raunchier, so I won't go into the details of that. Uh, but yeah, see the dog over here who's dressed as Negan, she actually appeared as Hella in our Thor parody. And you know, as a result of networking with her through Instagram and through those live streams and everything. So that's just another um, token of how cool it is to meet like-minded people on your different avenues and the successes that come with cross-promoting across different social media platforms. Honestly too, one of the best things that came out of that joke was a friend of ours just going off on the live stream making this joke. Within half an hour, someone had not only made an Instagram account for the joke, but it got 200 followers right out of the gate. So I, I don't know how that happened and where they even got the screenshot they used to be for it. So it's just a really awkward and funny thing. Yeah, we like to prank each other a lot. So here's a question for you guys. How big of a blessing is it going to be that they're not making a third Bill and Ted and you get to like neither teach you all to do like the parody of it and the crossovers and all this kind of thing? How's that going to impact your creative strategy? I'm, I'm working on that one full speed. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> make, them laugh, yeah. make them laugh. You know, we, they, we've always focused on superhero genres, superhero parodies. So I figure that's probably one that's still up for discussion. I have a YouTube well, channel to too. <laughs> Um, I'm up to like almost like 30 subscribers now, so I'm getting there. Um, my big problem is I, I need content and I'm very bad about switching my filming schedules um, to go do my own projects, which is my own fault. So I'm work I kind of bit off more than I can chew with what I want to be doing. So I'm working on them. I'm just very slow at getting those edits done. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be a fun one. We just did one earlier today too that was fantastic. Yeah, we had a... We had a num another uh, member of our team, he's dressed as Keanu Reeves Neo from The Matrix, and we had him face off against John Wick Keanu Reeves. The video is literally going to be called Keanu Reeves meets Keanu Reeves. <laughs> it's, it was, it's like a lot of whoa. Yeah, they, uh, they literally whoa. got in each other's face and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they're dodging the woes as if they're the bullets from The Matrix. <laughs> and it's going to be great because we're trying a new little experiment tomorrow. I'm, this is me, but like, we got Spider-Verse today. We got, I think, Deadpools. We have the Deadpool's Tyrannosauruses right that Jeff Goldblum's moved. You got the Tyrannosaurus? Go over there. Um, <laughs> and then tomorrow we're doing an Avengers Flash Mob. And then we're doing, we are doing a Bill and Ted Flash Mob. So I'm, it'll be my, I'm my first time doing that character at a convention, so I'm excited about that. So and it's gonna be awesome. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> doing excellent. Well, then, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that brought up a good point there too, because like personally, I also have my own YouTube channel where I've done a number of different things, from sometimes the superhero stuff, but I also am a huge history geek and a whole bunch of things that don't really fit with the Sean Ward Show theme. But I'll be honest, I've got probably nine or ten videos that I've shot. Like triple my have it, haven't edited them, haven't put them up, and some of them are at this point again to like four years old. So I think it's a really good like point to drive home is if you're going to be doing it, you really want your particular channel to be a success, and if you want to launch your brand, you really have to be able to put, sort of put a hand in every honey pot, be willing to not just have the idea, have the costume, write it down, film it, edit it, upload it. There's a lot of different stages where for a variety of people, depending what your niche area is or what takes more time for you. Because like personally, I hate editing. I hate it so much. <laughs> Having to like, it, it, is 30 seconds too long? Or should it should it have been 29 seconds? Wait, did I cut it before that person looked over? Is there caught like, the, the amount of brain work that has to go into that is generally why I film a lot of stuff and then it sits on my hard drive dying a slow death. <laughs> so it's one of those things, again, if you really want your channel to be the thing, you have to be willing to do all the work, not just parts of the work. All right, we got time for one last question. Who's it going to be? Yeah. What's up? No pressure. Oh. Yeah, I can count. All right. How do you guys like? Because you're local, so how do you guys do like the casting? For, like, is it just friends, or do you actually have casting calls? This we uh mostly friends, and then networking as well. So if uh, a cosplayer reaches out to us and uh, says, "Hey, this is what I'm what I'm all about." Love your guys' content. We kind of feel them out a little bit, get to know them, make sure they're not zero killers or anything. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, if they gel with us, then yeah, we invite them along. And actually, a lot of um, the cosplayers that have joined us, we met through events at a local comic shop that has been our base of operations for quite some time. 
and you know they've just kind of gained the interest to do the videos over time or other times I've been like hey you could probably play like Samuel Jackson or something like you want to be part of the parody <laughs> just kind of figure out what each person's strengths are going to be and what characters they'll uh, I think they'll do a great job at also, if you're looking to more perform in videos rather than creating the content yourself, uh, there's one website, I'm pretty sure it's both in Canada and the States, Mandy.com, which is basically for independent people who aren't necessarily professional actors but are looking to get involved. And because web series have become such an ongoing thing that you can find a lot of casting calls there. Um, also, if you just kind of Google YouTube casting calls for your area, you'll generally find a lot of stuff where you're more interested in the performance side, you can be aiming for that rather than having to do all the things. All right, we're going to take one last one. How many people ended up turning into a beat series? How many people ended up being serious? There was one, like in the that, general population. one that keeps following us around. Uh, there's been others that aren't killers, but there's experiences. <laughs> Kill the experience, shall we say. It's strange. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You kind of just have to deflect uh, ones that you just know aren't going to be a good fit for the roles or for the team or for society in general. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and on that note, uh, we're going to wrap up the panel because we're actually going to be a part of the uh, Deadpool meetup that's taking place with the uh, Marvel shoot that's going on um, in about 15 minutes or so. So on behalf of the Sean Ward Show at Make and Laugh Films, thank you very much for attending. This was How to Combine How to Make Comics and also YouTube and Comedy. Thank you guys very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.